Honestly, it has been so wild covering Manchester United this summer. In the last 72 hours, how we've gone from not being linked with signing a defensive midfielder this summer to signing Casemiro, I still can't really get my head around it. And no, I'm not getting distracted from the protests on Monday. I can have a conversation about the transfers here while still being laser focused on that as well. Don't get distracted by it. The club is panicking at the end of the window, but the club is panicking at the end of the window. The club is going a bit mad in the transfer market. And next up on the list, we've got to have a conversation here about Anthony. Anthony was a player who we were linked with earlier in the window, but as soon as Ajax put that price tag of 80 million euros on him, we were like, well, we're going to get priced out of a move for him. Since then, now, last 72 hours, we've even put in an 80 million euros bid. That's been rejected. Anthony's now refusing to train at Ajax. He's desperate for this move. I'm going to bring you bang up today in everything that's happened with the Anthony story. And then we can have a discussion about it in the comments. Because I'll tell you what, I didn't think that we would be at this point here in this window with Anthony. But United is surprising me, kind of in all the wrong ways. What we're doing now is panicking madly at the end of the window. It seems like the club is just look down the back of the sofa and goes, oh, look, there's 150, there's 200, there's 300 million euros. Oh, we can spend it now. I wish we had done this at the start of the window to give Ten Hag the true support that he needed. But if we run through the story here, of course, this I've already covered this for you when I when I covered the, the Casemiro and the Anthony deals in a bit of detail. It's from David Ornstein. The Manchester United had put in an 80 million euro bid for Anthony, but that it had been rejected. You see there, Man United have revived their interest in Ajax forward Anthony, and this was published on the 18th of August. So that's two days ago. And if we fast forward, we see what Fabrizio Romano has been saying on the situation. He's saying this. He's saying, look, Man United are not giving up on Anthony. Ajax have turned down that new bid, but United intend to plan, uh, sorry, in plan to try again. They feel Anthony really wants to move. I've been told it's not sure that Anthony starts for Ajax's game on Sunday. That will definitely be a massive indicator as to whether or not this deal will go through. So I suppose we'll find out more on Sunday. And Gakpo is the cheaper option, which I will discuss in a little bit more detail. But look, Ajax are discussing internally about Anthony. There's a chance for him to be left out of that team on Sunday. He would, Man United's be rejected, but I, he wants to move. Anthony wants to move. And this, for me, is a big, big part of this whole situation. Because Anthony is... a. He's not handing in a transfer request, but he, well, he can't really do much more. I'll be completely honest. And if I can fast forward to today, actually, I was going to say this for a little bit later in the show, but Jonathan Schrager here saying that there was a behind closed doors training session at Ajax today and Anthony refused to take part. The club are willing to sell the player to Manchester United for 100 million euros. And that's the first part of the combo we've got to have here. What do you think about Anthony for 100 million euros? Because there is absolutely no way that Anthony is worth 100 million euros, right? We can all agree on that in the comments. In the same way that I felt that Martinez probably wasn't worth the 50... His, his market value, not that he wasn't worth it, but his market value was not the price we paid for him. Anthony's market value is not 100 million euros. Certainly not in the summer that at what Raheem Sterling goes to, was it? 47 million roughly there or thereabouts I think it was it's from I can't remember what the price was but it certainly wasn't 100 million uh, but but it, when it comes to the transfers and the price of transfers and the values of players it all comes down to how much he is valued at the club that's selling him and how much the club buying him wants to pay now at this point United are panicking and everybody knows that we're panicking so there's going to be an extra inflation on that but when it comes to this particular bid for I for Anthony sorry from Manchester United, Ajax are playing a dangerous game because they put a price tag on him of 80 million euros. It was overpriced anyway. And Manchester United have come and met that now. And they've said no. And this is the, this is in a summer where they've lost Ten Hag, Van de Gag, uh, Martinez. Uh, they've lost Gravenberch. They've lost Masrawi. They've lost Haller. Their team has been shredded. Uh, genuinely, I've got real sympathy for Ajax in that sense because they wouldn't have planned to, to sell all these players at once. But with a player like Anthony, who clearly has ambition, massive ambition, and you put a price tag on him of 80 million euros, and then a bid comes in and you reject it, expect him to kick off about it. Expect there to be repercussions. And it doesn't surprise me to hear this from Jonathan Schrager, that Anthony is now refusing to train, because he's doing everything really to force this move through. He wants that move, and that is a big, that's a big part of all this, in my opinion. Because we keep talking about how important it is for players to want to play for Manchester United. And that's the reason why I would support the idea of signing Anthony. 
I can't get behind the price tag. Ultimately, I don't really care about the price tag. But do you think that Anthony would be the right signing? Let me know in the comments. But look, on top of all of this, Anthony gave an interview with uh, The Telegraph out in Holland where he spoke about his future. Now, it has to be said before I run through this interview, uh, I'm pretty sure this interview was done before that 80 million bid went in and was rejected. So maybe the context of it would be slightly different after the fact. But let's run through what he said because he didn't exactly pull any punches before that anyway. He was asked here, because can you assure the fans that you'll be an Ajax player on the 1st of September? And he said, no. To be honest, I can't. I can say that I want to make the right decision together with my family, agents and Ajax. And God's dis God decides my future in the end. Hello, Cristiano Ronaldo. He's saying, let's put it differently. Will you be disappointed if you were still at Ajax on the 1st of September? He's like, no, 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 no. I'm very happy at Ajax. I have a contract until 2025. And I will give everything for this beautiful club with every second. I wear this shirt with pride. He said, like, I find it important that the atmosphere is good and that we create a team. That's why I put a lot of effort into my teammates. It's also a signal to the children to work hard, create friendships. You would achieve more together than alone. What an inspirational bloke. I'm not actually taking a piss. I suppose that's a nice thing for him to say. Uh, but look, let's run through it all down here. Thanks to Ajax, I've become a more complete footballer. And he was asked about Ten Hag and his relationship with Ten Hag. This is what he had to say. I will always cheer for Eric Ten Hag. It makes me sad that I haven't been able to do this for him yet. But knowing Eric... I'm sure he will turn things around. Manchester United will become a better club with him in charge. And he went into a bit more detail on that. Uh, actually, no, this, this isn't the part we're going into detail, sorry. He said, what do you think about the fans begging you to stay? I'm very thankful to them for that. Every time I walk on the pitch and hear the fans shout my name, I get happy. It motivates me to make them happy with goals and assists and skills. Is it an option to extend your current contract? He said, my focus is on my football. I put all of these matters into the hand of my agent. And that was the final part there. Sorry. I wouldn't say he's being a dispet. He's, he's doing what every footballer should do. That's what the agents do do. But it's that first important comment there. He's just laying it on the table, man. Ajax, I know that Ajax fans will probably be pissed off. They're going to semi feel backstabbed by this whole situation. But simply put, you cannot put an 80 million euro price on a player receive an offer for 80 million reject it and not expect that said player to be pissed off about it that's the situation they've got there now do you think united will go in with a 100 million offer that sounds like what ajax are going to try and squeeze out of this because they got more remember that we went in with the offer that they wanted for martinez and then they said no they're doing the exact same thing with anthony and the fact that he's there refusing to train is a big part of it as well now of course if we don't go in for him it, it looks like Cody Gakpo is going to be the alternative. And I think that's the, probably the most important question that I can ask here today. Anthony or Gakpo? Do you think that's a choice that you could make? Uh, Gakpo obviously is significantly cheaper, but we're not here to talk about the bottom line. We're ultimately talking about who is the better player for Manchester United. Now, two very different players, actually. Gakpo plays far more off the left than Anthony plays off the right. It will probably mean a switch of position for Jaden Sancho. I'm going to do a video tomorrow, actually, looking at man how Manchester United could line up with Casemiro and Anthony or Gakpo. And I'll speak about the differences in the types of games that they have. But United are going in aggressively, no doubt, for Anthony. Right? We want Anthony. Eric Ten Hag wants Anthony. Whether we get him or not is a completely different conversation. I suppose it all comes down to the price. And what I have said before, what I will say again, is that all this mad spending, all this mad movement at the end of the window, it's not going to change the focus of Manchester United fans from the protests on Monday. That's going to be one of the most significant and important protests against the ownership of our club that there's ever been. I, get, I have a good feeling about the amount of people that will turn up. Everyone has to remain peaceful because as soon as a, a protest switches to a non-peaceful situation... It gives ammunition to the, for the narrative to be changed. So I would implore everybody to make sure you keep it peaceful. But go there. Make your voices heard. I'll be there on Monday and I'm looking forward to it. But Manchester United, we're going full tilt at the end of this window. We're going after Anthony. We want him. We've got Casemiro out of nowhere. And if it's not Anthony, it's going to be Gakpo. Man United, as I say, finding hundreds of millions of pounds under the, uh, down, down the back of the sofa. Wow. Wow. Why, where was that money before when the club wasn't panicking? Hmm. Questions to be asked there. But you let me know. 100 million? Would you be fine with United spending that? 
Do you want United to spend that or should we go for Gakpo or go somewhere else? You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. Look, as I say, I'm trying to go away for a couple of days and all of our transfer activities have seemingly come. <laughs> so I apologise for the different backdrop, but I'm sure you can let me off. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. I'll see you soon.